Hello and welcome to your next tutorial in C Sharp and today we're going to be discussing properties. Now, do you remember in when we were creating classes we were uh, using accessor and mutator functions? The accessor functions I was always putting the words get before whatever it was like get name or get this, get that and for the mutators I was always calling them set something like set the name of something or set their GPA I was using the words get and set. Well, I created this class here. It's called car, just car. And I already put out the default constructor here. So the three member variables here are all can all be set to null automatically. So what's the next step? Do you want to create a mutator and accessor functions? Well, we could, but we could also create properties which do the exact same thing. So how do we go about doing that? in order to create a property for a corresponding variable that we're going to be dealing with one of these private variables let's call it public that's going to be the access modifier that we'll be using public because we want to be able to access this property followed up by the data type that we're going to be dealing with so this one's going to be string and let's call it since we'll be setting a new brand every time we use this property we'll call it new brand and since this is a property not a method Otherwise, you know, as a func methods and functions are the same thing, different names though. Uh, we don't put parentheses here, so we'll just go opening curly brace and closing curly brace. Then you're gonna have to throw out the words get, semicolon, then set. And basically, this will act as both our accessor, this is the accessor, and this is the mutator, basically, all in one property for us. Now, as it is, all it's gonna do is uh, set whatever the object is referring to this to whatever you set it equal to but it won't be changing the variable down here so if we go to our form one here and inside our submit if we create a new car and call it my car and set that equal to new car we could just go my car and set that equal to whoops no dot and see the new brand right there that's our property and we could set that equal to, let's say, Honda. Something like that. And that will work. And we could always print that. Let's print that. So I'll throw out my car dot new brand. There we go. And it's already a string, so we don't have to put the two string at the end. So if I click save and I run this. I click submit, we get the Honda. And there's two things going on here. When we use the my car, then the property and set it equal to something, that's when we're using the mutator. We're using the set because we're setting it equal to something. Then when we're calling it like this, but we're not setting it equal to something like we are right here, then it's going to use the get because then it's fetching the information. So here it's using the set, then here it's using the get and you can get rid of either which. Oh shoot, I didn't want to get rid of that. Oh, cracker. Oh, what did I get rid of? The cars? Okay, there we go. I guess it's not a big deal. So, oh my goodness. Make sure these are all the same. I'm probably going to cut this out or something. Okay, I think it's, everything's the same. That f really freaked me out. The control Z didn't work. I can't believe it. Okay, so you can get rid of either one of these. So if you want to make it what's called a read-only property, then you can get rid of the set. And that's a read-only property. But now we have an error because we're trying to change it right here. We're trying to set something. And we can't do that. So that's against the rules. So a read-only property, we can only access that variable that we're trying to get. And likewise, we can... There's really no name for this. Um, so that was called a read-only property doing it. If we get rid of the get, then we can only set the value. So this is pretty much just acts as a mutator. So we can get rid of this. That'll work. But then let's comment this out. And now we get no errors. So you can also do all that as, we, uh, as I just showed you. So I'll throw out the get back in there. So, But when you're doing this, you're not changing this brand private member variable here. So if you ever want to access this brand variable, you know what, uh, I'll show you right now. I'll throw in another message box. 
dot show and I would actually have to use a get so I don't I'm not sure if I can show it to you let's create a quick uh, let's quick make a quick accessor here so I can show you this in motion so we'll have a private or public excuse me and so we'll have a public what do I want to call it or what's the that type string get brand and all it's going to do is return brand something like that and does that work there we go so I'm going to use this get brand to return the brand variable down here this string brand that's private so if I go back here and I go my car dot the get brand let's see what happens here I type in submit I get Honda and I hit it again now it's blank well, why is that well as I said we never um, change the value of brand which is the whole point of properties actually so how do we go about changing this uh, in order to change that what we can do is set brand to well whatever we whatever we typed in so we'll throw out a space curly brace this time we're gonna put the semicolon within the curly braces and then we can type in brand is equal to then value now what's value what is that well what value is is whatever we pass in so if we go back to right here when we go my car dot new brands so we call this property instead of equal to something this Honda here this string is gonna now be the same is now gonna be passing as a parameter even though you don't see it as value so if I hover over it see how it says local variable string value well, well this will now be equal to whatever we pass in which is this Honda so now it's gonna be now it's gonna set brand here equal to Honda for us and then we can return brand there we go and there we go so now if we run this it should actually change brand for us so we go Honda and then there's Honda still so it worked so there you go so now we just use a property and we used a mutator and an accessor so that really uh, I hope that really helps uh, should I do something else should I do MPG or cost hmm let's do cost so let's try to do cost next so uh, I can get rid of this accessor and I'll, since I proved it to you let me get rid of the accessor here because we don't need it anymore and let's make another property here so I'll call it public uh, double and what should we call it new cost and I think that's all I need and should we do something for the cost let's just do a get set and let's actually retrieve some information from our form so let's let's actually take the mpg whatever that is let's multiply it by fifteen and that'll be the cost I don't know this is just a weird example I'm coming up with so we'll call it double or yeah I guess I'll call it double and what do I want it to be cost no it's gonna be double mpg is equal to then convert dot to double and then it's going to be text which one mpg dot text so basically we're going to double mpg and then that's going to be the cost so let's see here now we're going to want to create a new property so we already did so let's set that information okay so let's go back over to our form and below this go my car dot then access the new cost and set instead and set that equal to our mpg here so we're throwing mpg in there so now we're gonna set mpg equal to that there we go and so we're gonna set mpg equal to value so whatever so this mpg that we're setting our property equal to equal to this mpg will be passed in as a parameter which is what this value will now be equal to so it'll be mpg equal to value so I have an error here 
double to int. So I have an int somewhere. So there's a double. Oh, I got to change this to a double here. There we go. So now this will be equal to, and th th that's how you know that this value is that, because it was fetching that information from over here, this mpg, which is a double. And that's why it was getting a, it can't convert from an int to a double or anything like that. Okay, so now the mpg here will now be equal to whatever we passed in. And let's return double that. So we'll go return, and we're going to return mpg times 2. Let's put all that in parentheses here. There we go. So now we're going to return mpg times 2. So I click save and let's go back and do another message box. Dot show. We can now show my car dot mpg. So if we go mpg, or excuse me, new uh, new cost. And the semicolon. Okay, so if I click save. Now what will happen here is this is this is going to be really really weird. So, oh, whoops, my cost equals mpg. What are we returning? Oh, I gotta hit two string. Because this is no longer a string. There we go. Okay, so now what's happening here is we're gonna type in something to the mpg box. You know, we're gonna convert it to a double. And then right here, we're gonna set the property new cost equal to that mpg that we typed in. So going over here, this value will be equal to wherever we typed in the text box. Then our private mpg here will now be equal to that value. And then we're going to return that uh, whatever we typed in the text box. But this time, we're going to multiply it by 2. So we'll click Save, and there we go. So that's all it's going to actually do. So the new cost it's, has nothing to do with cost, really. So, Or we could make it cost. Why not? Throw a dollar sign here. There we go. That's going to be really, really weird, but okay. I'll stick with it. So now we're going to have to throw in Honda here, and for the MPG, we'll throw in something really good. Let's throw in 40 or something. So we get Honda, and then $80, because we multiplied, multiplied it by 2, and then put a dollar sign in front of it. So what I just showed you that very last time, obviously I didn't think about doing this ahead of time, so it was kind of a sad example, but I hope this uh, lightened up things, made things a lot more clear on properties. And in a nutshell, I hope this video was uh, helpful for you. So I'll see you next time.